Thank you, Chris, and everybody. We have around 100 people uh, joining us this morning, which is amazing. Uh, it's a great opportunity to talk about everything Puerto Rico. Our presentation might be one of the most technical ones in this in in this uh, today, but uh, we will try to make it easier for everybody. Uh, I'm Maria de los Angeles Rivera. I'm a CPA uh, tax partner with Kibane Grant Thornton, which is a local CPA firm, the, the Grant Thornton firm in Puerto Rico. And today with me, I have Caroline Lopez, uh, who is a tax manager, and also Samira Jacin, who is a senior uh, in our tax department. And, and both of them work with, very closely with me in everything OC, especially you know, uh, understanding the federal rules, how they apply to Puerto Rico, and of course, how to combine that with our local uh, laws, regulations, and incentives. Again, um, uh, this is a, a presentation you know, uh, for educational purposes. If you need uh, specific advice, please let us know. Uh, and we'll be gladly, you know, jump in the call with you and talk about it. Uh, our agenda today, and, and in this half hour, we want to cover maybe uh, a little bit too much, but we'll try to fit everything in. Um, we're gonna give you some background about Puerto Rico. Uh, Nathan did a great job, uh, uh, took us through history line and, and gave us a really great background of, of how we are here today. Uh, we'll be talking about the OC program in Puerto Rico, the deferral, the QOCDs, uh, compliance matters, other tax matters that should be also addressed when coming to Puerto Rico, and some something about exit strategy uh, uh, alongside the OC, you know, uh, ten year rule of of non recognition of gain. As he has mentioned before. Uh, Puerto Rico uh, ended up being almost 100% uh, opportunity zone designated, and this was because a special, you know, provision in the law that allowed Puerto Rico to to designate 100% of its low income tracts as an opportunity zone. Um, one important thing we want to make clear is that Puerto Rico, for U.S. tax purposes, is a foreign jurisdiction. So even though we are U.S. citizens and we are, uh, you know governed by both and protected by both US and Puerto Rico constitutions, coming to Puerto Rico to do business from uh, a business standpoint, you know, from, from corporations and partnerships, you're going into a foreign jurisdiction. So careful, strategic, and careful planning must be put in place, especially if you are coming to Puerto Rico with your business, but keeping partners uh, or owners in the US. You can uh, get into deep waters uh, of international tax regime in the US. So again, very careful um, planning has to be in place so you can benefit the most out of you know, the Puerto Rico incentives and, and, and not you know, fall into any, any trap for the unwary. Also, if, if you come to Puerto Rico, you move to Puerto Rico, but you still have uh, entities, trusts, uh, corporations that are still operating in the US, you might fall into these own, uh, traps also uh, because of constructive and uh, um, ownership rules that are embedded in the international tax regime in the US. So again, I just wanna make, make a point there that a specific um, attention has to be given to, to, to those things when coming down to Puerto Rico. Uh, throughout the, the presentation, we're going to be talking about terms that are very, you know, uh, you must be all very uh, uh, related with under the OC program. You know, we'll be talking about opportunity zones, qualified funds, uh, QOCBs, QOCB property, etc. So it's the same terms. Um, Puerto Rico, uh, it's, it's part of the OC program as a U.S. territory. Special concessions were made on the definitions of, of certain terms as domestic entities. And later on on the presentation, we'll, we'll touch on that. But again, the, the basic concepts and terms apply the same in Puerto Rico. With that, um, I'm gonna leave you with Caroline Lopez, a uh, tax manager, and she's gonna talk a little bit deeper on the OC program in Puerto Rico and, and the deferral rules and QOCDs. Caroline, are you around there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. 
So as Maria mentioned, I'm going to be digging a little deeper as to how this program works in Puerto Rico. So first, we, we, we like to divide it in, in two because a lot of this gets confused. And again, we're talking about international tax and, and we're talking about OZ matters. So this is certainly not, not something that, that we're, that we're um, saying it, it's, it's a simple, simple regime. We're talking about very technical regimes full of a lot of, 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 of technical provisions. So we understand that the best way to, to, to understand it in the Puerto Rico perspective is um, divided in two, the deferral and, and the businesses, right? So, so the, the first thing about, about to know about doing business in Puerto Rico under this regime of qualified opportunity funds is that as Maria mentioned, the, 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 the rules that apply here are the same rules of the United States federal code. If you have an eligible gain in the United States, those have to be invested in a fund, et cetera, et cetera. So Puerto Rico, if a fund is organized in Puerto Rico, then it has to invest in, in, in property located in Puerto Rico. And if that requirement is met, then that fund is gonna be eligible to for, those, for the deferral of the gain in the United States because that Puerto Rico entity is gonna be considered a domestic entity for, for OC purposes. Um, in terms of the deferral, uh, and Nate mentioned it in 2019. In next slide, please, Maria. Uh, in 2019, Puerto Rico adopted its own conforming rules to allow Puerto Rico people and taxpayers that have gains in Puerto Rico to be, you know, to, to be able to, to invest in a fund. And those gains have exactly the same treatment in Puerto Rico. Again, we're talking about Puerto Rico tax standpoint. Um, these gains have to be um, derived after November 7, 2018, which seems like a random date, but it's basically the date where this bill was presented in Puerto Rico. Um, and then the rules are, are referred to federal rules. So we don't have any federal, any local reg regulations in Puerto Rico. So we, we follow every, all of the rules from a federal standpoint. So in, in investors will have 180 days to invest in funds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, from, a, from an election standpoint, Puerto Rico has issued schedule OZ, which is the schedule that the investor uses to, to make the deferral in Puerto Rico. Caroline, uh, if I may, before we, we go further, and, and it's very important to understand why as, as living in Puerto Rico, we needed this, this legislation. And it's because, uh, as you all know, the, the opportunity zone deferral and non recognition of the gain is under the US federal, you know, IRRC, you know, the Internal Revenue Code of the US. As, as Puerto Rico citizens and as bona fide Puerto Rico citizens under section 933, we are not taxed at the federal level on our Puerto Rico source income. And by definition, certain capital gains, usually the, the sale of personal property, if you're a bona fide resident of Puerto Rico is considered Puerto Rico source. So for example, for me living in Puerto Rico and generated a capital gain in like say the market, I was not able to benefit of the OC you know, uh, incentives because my capital gain is not taxed at US level. So. What happened was that we had local legislation, this legislation that Caroline was explaining. So local investors, you know, bona fide residents of Puerto Rico could benefit of this type of deferral by investing as, as Caroline is gonna mention. Mm -hmm. So the rules are the same. The, the added requirement is that the fund has to invest in property located in Puerto Rico for a Rico investor to have the step up and the 10 and the 10 year holding period exemption. The recognition date is still at December 31st, 2026. If it were extended in the United States, then Puerto Rico would have to, you know, to, to amend its local legislation as well. There are no bills for that extension that we know about. So that was the part about deferrals for, for investors. For in that, same, in that same law in 2019, adopted, adopted um, priority projects incentives 
which basically were adopted under the OZ program because OZs generally, um, to, you know, are, is a program that, that, that we see most with, when we're talking about real estate development. So in Puerto Rico previously, we didn't have incentives uh, for the development of real estate projects in Puerto Rico. So basically in 2019, the government of Puerto Rico created a whole framework to provide incentives for these uh, priority projects. And um, so, so, so to, to put things into perspective again, you have a, a qualified opportunity fund and all the rules apply. You know, you have to have a 90% investment in, in qualified opportunities on property, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of the day, you have to have a business in Puerto Rico and a business can be anything from supermarket, which is not an incentivized business in Puerto Rico, to a hospitality program, which we we're discussing earlier, uh, to other incentives that we're gonna be talking about uh, early, uh, forward, and then priority projects, which is this new type of, of incentive. And uh, basically, Maria, the next one, please. Mm -hmm. uh, to be considered an eligible business for purposes of, of a priority project, the activity has to be carried in the zone. Uh, it can be eligible for other incentives in Puerto Rico, and we're gonna touch upon those um, a little later on. The business is carried out by a fund or a business. So again, the local legislation goes back to, to federal criteria. And then the activities carried on as a priority project. The priority project uh, designation it has been delegated to an OZ committee of Puerto Rico. So this is a group of, of government officials that designate what type of projects are gonna be eligible to be considered a priority projects. At the moment, these are the, the ones that are eligible. Uh, basically development of low-income housing, development and construction of residential or commercial, commercial re real estate for rent or sale and industrial properties as well. Basically, developments related to, to real estate in Puerto Rico for sale or rent. What are the incentives? Um, basically, that it's going to be an income tax rate of 18.5% on that eligible business income, either rent or sale or of, the, of, of these properties. A total exemption on, on dividend distributions, 18.5% uh, on withholding on, on royalties. In interest paid by these uh, entities, that, which are priority projects, are not subject to tax in Puerto Rico. So that that is uh, an incentive for lenders to the to the industry here. Uh, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the investment tax credit. Somebody was talk, was asking about credits. So whenever you have a priority project that complies with everything that we are discussing here in 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 in, in, a, in a high level. Uh, there's a guaranteed tax credit of 5% that is that can be increased up to 25% based on criteria set forth by the committee. We're going to be talking about that. Um, the investment tax credit is dependent upon the cash invested by the investor in the fund. And it has certain other criteria, but basically it's tied to the cash that's invested in the fund. A, and other exemptions a, from, from a municipal license, a municipal tax perspective. Um, it has a, pen, a special permit process and a 15 year exemption period. No gain or loss is recognized if the, if the assets are, are sold during the exemption period. We do have a pending regulations that says that, the, that these proceeds have to be reinvested in the zone Within the 12 month period, which is mirrored uh, of the is a mirror of the federal regulations. So yeah, we, we want to focus on, on this because this is rather new. Uh, this is again a, a resolution issued by the committee uh, of the Opportunity Zone Committee in Puerto Rico. And basically um, the credit, every, everybody had doubts as to okay, I have a guaranteed tax credit of 5%, but how how much can this be increased up to 25% of the investment? So basically what this resolution does is that it, it sets forth the criteria to increase the credit from 5% to 25%. And then the committee established, or, uh, you know, it made its determination that zones in Puerto Rico are going to mirror zones uh, in, the, in the federal uh, publications. 
So how this credit works, again, it's a, it is the cash invested in the fund. Basically it starts at a 5% guaranteed tax credit and it increases on, on you know, on a, a, on a 5% depending on the on compliance of the criteria of the committee. One of the criteria is substantial improvement of on, as set forth under the uh, federal regulations. So basically, if there's a substantial improvement, as we all know, uh, under the rules of the federal regulations, you know, doubling the, the basis of the property, then the project, not the project, the investor is going to have a 5% additional uh, credit. Then job creation, if it's a 25 increase in job creation from, from year to year, you're going to have a 5% additional credit. Uh, if the project is in affordable housing, suitable living environments, in municipalities with low or moderate income, income uh, then the investor will have 5% additional uh, credit. And last, education, health, or housing projects, those get a 5% uh, credit. So again, it depends on how much of the criteria is met, the credit will increase by 5%. There's also a general a provision that says that if the project is a, you know, is a very important project uh, and it, it doesn't comply with some of these requirements, but the, pro the proponent of the project it has the, you know, the, the factors to present a, 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 and to request an, an increased tax credit, the project can be presented to the, to the committee for, for their consideration. Here, I, I want to mention that um, this is this is the credit scheme for the priority projects. Remember, as Caroline explained before, if the project qualifies for any other incentives, like for example the tourism uh, incentives, you cannot go, you know, and apply for the priority projects. Uh, as to credits, you know, Puerto Rico, as part of the Act 60 um, legislation, some of the credits were eliminated. So now we only have, I think it's um, five credits uh, for this type of investment, which one of them is the, the tourism that uh, Nathan uh, uh, explained before. We have the priority projects. We have R&D that applies to any uh, exempt business. Uh, and we have the film industry credit, which of course applies to, to creative industries. And we have the, the credit for products manufactured in Puerto Rico. We used to have energy credits, and I think that was one of the questions, but locally we don't have any more, any longer, you know, credits for, for green energy or, or sustainable energy. So from, from the local standpoint, uh, we, we do not have that type of credit. Some of the projects may qualify for uh, some US credits, but again, careful planning and strategy. I'm not an expert on energy credits, but I know uh, some of the projects that have been done in Puerto Rico have benefit from, from US credits. Thank you, Maria. So this table summarizes a uh, taxation in Puerto Rico for, as a regular rates, US federal and priority projects for, for your reference. In the next couple of slides, Samira will be presenting other types of incentives available in Puerto, Puerto Rico. Thank you, Caroline. Samira, are you around? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Caroline and Maria. Um, so as we discussed, one of the key takeaways here is that the capital gain incentives may be enjoyed by themselves or may be combined with the priority projects or uh, these other incentives provided in the incentives code. And the incentives code is Act 60, which is the local legislation that combines like all the separate laws uh, that were, um, that included all the tax benefits. So the Puerto Rico Incentives Code provides many tax benefits for her industry, uh, such as the exportation of goods and services, manufacturing, infrastructure, and these tax benefits may be combined with the, with the capital gain incentives. Remember that if a business use, if is eligible for under these tax benefits, it cannot apply for the priority project. Here we have included a table summarizing in overall, the ordinary tax rates applicable for conducting business in Puerto Rico and the exempt uh, tax rates and uh, exemptions in general. But remember that the type of incentives will vary depending on the industry. 
So if a business wants to avail from the tax incentives provided in Puerto Rico, you will need to be compliant with filings at the US level, at the US federal level, and at the Puerto Rico level. Uh, with respect to the U.S. federal level, the, US, the OC fund will have to annually file the self-certification form 8996 with its U.S. federal tax return to certify that it's organized to invest in OC property and to report that it meets the 90% investment standard. And the investor uh, must also file form 8949 and 8997. In Puerto Rico, if the business has a tax exemption grant under the Puerto Rico Incentives Code, it will need to file an exempt business tax return and accept annual report with the Office of Incentives. And the stockholder will be required to file uh, their Puerto Rico individual income tax return along with Schedule C, which is the local equivalent of Form 8949. Here we, we included um, three key concepts provided by the Puerto Rico Internal Revenue Code that are relevant to individuals and businesses interested in investing in Puerto Rico. First, we have the gross income concept, which is similar to the U.S. Internal Revenue Code. Is it, it says it includes all the income gains and profits derived from the seller disposition of any type of property and those income derived from whatever source. In addition, if you're selling inventory, the gross income will be the gross profit derived from the sale, determining under gap, less the cost of success of the sale of products. Another important component here is the definition of what constitutes income attributed to Puerto Rico sources when selling real property located in Puerto Rico. When you sell real property in Puerto Rico, you will need to recognize like all the gains, profits, and income derived from the sale, and you will be allowed to deduct expenses, losses incurred, and to apportion those expenses and losses that cannot be directly assigned. And the next concept, this applies on to investors that sell their interest in OC funds. Uh, this concept does not apply to priority projects as they are, they are required to be taxed as corporations nor OC funds as they are exclusively, ex expressly excluded from this section. So this provision applies when a foreign partner, which is defined as a non-US citizen or a foreign entity that disposes their partnership interest when such partnership is engaged in a Puerto Rico trade or business. So in general term, terms, all the gains or benefits income derived from the sale will be considered sourced to Puerto Rico. It, when selling at a gain position, the partner has to recognize a gain derived from the sale equal to his distributive share of the amount that would have, would have been realized by the partnership uh, as if it sold all its assets connected to the Puerto Rico business at market value. And a withholding of 15% will be applicable. Next slide, please. With respect to the operating income uh, and interim capital gains, the tax impact related to the investor will depend on the tax incentives chosen and the structure chosen. If, if you have a partnership election at the US federal level, then the US investor will be subject to US federal tax on their distributive share. As, as Maria explained, uh, in case of Puerto Rico investors, Puerto, they will be able to exclude Puerto Rico gross income from US federal tax, and they will not be subject to, to this tax in connection to the distributive share but there will be the, the OC business and the fund will be, if, if it's taxed as a corporation, it will assume the tax burden. And uh, finally, an attractive sole strategy uh, that we wanna talk about is selling the interest in, in the OC fund or the OC business when they are both treated as US partnerships. As you may recall, under, under US regulations, under proposed regulations, when the investor had to sell its investment in the co-op, it was allowed to exclude the gross income from the capital gain, but it didn't. It wasn't clear if the if the election was available to the assets that were sold, and then final regulations came in and clarified this point. And now um, taxpayers that have 
qualifying investments in a in a OC fund partnership or S corp that is held for at least ten years, and then the OC fund sells or changes the property, the taxpayer cannot put all costs in the Puerto Rico Internal Revenue Code. We don't have a the same taxable treatment as only the sale of the interest in the OC fund is the one that qualifies for the exclusion of capital gain. But we are expecting further guidance from the Puerto Rico Treasury Department. This concludes our presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Samira. Um, Chris, uh, uh, we are right on on time. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll We'll uh, write on the chat our, our emails, our, our information. So anybody that can and wants to contact us, you know, they can do that. Yes, please. Uh, and anybody that wants uh, to receive a copy of this presentation can also write us and we will send it. Yeah, thank you, Maria. And, and, and the rest of the team, obviously, you know, this Grant Thornton office is incredibly knowledgeable and can dive into tons more information. Yes. Um, but again, I want to reiterate what, what Kimberly sent me in a text, which is like, it's so nice to see some pictures and slides and have so many people contributing. So um, thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, I, I, I encourage everyone to kind of keep the flow happening in the chat. I appreciate some of the conversation that's going on there. It's very real. And, um, and, 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 you know, let's get real, you know, there's, there's real positives here. Um, and again, you know, creating solutions together is what, what this is all about. So um, we're, we're, we're taking this day in steps, right? And we're building, as you may notice, through the agenda and through the presenters and the speakers, um, a, a sort of like stepped up process, right? Um, how to get involved a little bit more of the basics, what's the island look like? How are you able to invest there? Um, and so I want to say, Maria, and I want to reiterate, um, thank you all. And, uh, and Maria and all the presenters here are also um, members of this Porto Zone in, in the Osworks Group community. And so if you think of questions after the fact, certainly reach out directly. Um, Maria, you put your contact information in the yeah. chat. Um, we'll also be following up. And there's been a couple questions about video replays. All of these are being recorded. Um, in fact, I'm going to stop this one right now and start the next one in a second but they will be posted and we'll follow up with an email to everyone who registered for this event. So um, thank you so much. And there's so much more to unpack here, right? Especially when it gets into the specifics of people's particular projects. And so, um, yes, thanks again. I will you'll hear this. Yeah, Maria, did you have something? Chris, if I, I just may, one more thing. Uh, in all this, there is no one size fits all. Mm. It's usually one misconception that we receive every day, you know, when we talk to people uh, that are interested in coming to Puerto Rico. Oh, somebody told me this and somebody did this. You know, there's no one size fits all. It's one size fits one. Okay? <laughs> so your situation, your facts, your circumstances are different than anybody else's. And, and therefore that make an, that will make a change, you know, on how you do your strategy. to go Absolutely. Down. Yeah, and the other thing that I would add is, uh, and we've talked about this many times on other Osworth Group panel events about compliance, compliance is, is a must. <laughs> it's not an option, right? You have to be in compliance. Um, we don't have to be, but <laughs> it's not going to be a great situation, right, uh, if you're not. So, um, so, yes, thank you. Please reach out to Maria and her team. Um, thank you, Caroline and Samira, for your insights as well and for being here.